on Zoom with the mayor of Bell Fountain is Mr. Ben Staller. Hello. Good morning, Angie. So I've got all kinds of questions. We normally catch up every month and finding out what's going on in the city. And sometimes you know about what's going on in the county. And uh, you've made the papers lately. So tell me what's been going on. Well, we've been making every effort that we could to hear our voices. And I'd say ours, it's collectively. So from a community, whether it's just Bell Fountain or Logan County, uh, we've been certainly urging Columbus, Ohio uh, to consider us slightly different than Cleveland and Columbus. Uh, our numbers are much lower for those who have positive uh, coronavirus test results. Uh, we've got well over 150 businesses who have submitted their plans for safely reopening. And I'm thankful that uh, today uh, most of those businesses are open. I, I think at the governor's uh, remarks, by this Friday, 92% of Ohio's businesses are back up and running, at least with some restrictions. And so our voice now is for those other 8%. We still, we're sending mom and dad back to work, but we don't have uh, uh, some of the provisions necessary for childcare. We have fitness centers of all sizes, small, medium, large. They've, they have their plans. They've been moving their equipment. Everything's clean. They're ready to turn on the lights and people enjoy their fitness. They haven't been accounted for. And there's a few other businesses like that. And so I guess we're trying to be the voice for the remaining businesses to tell them at least from what extent we can that Logan County is ready to open safely. So this resolution came before the commissioners, correct? And it was, or city council, not the, which one? City council. Actually both. About a week ago, the commissioners, that's, that's kind of the way a legislative body sends its letter. And so the commissioners passed a resolution and that made the paper. I don't have that title around here and essentially said, Let's open business now. Okay. okay. Uh, just this is now Thursday. So two days ago, city council met and they passed a resolution. And the resolution also stated that we're ready for local businesses to be open uh, safely for the public. And it went on with uh, restating some of those statistics that I'm sharing with you that uh, that a lot of steps have been made in this time that Businesses have been closed, uh, and, and and so what happens after that's passed as a resolution by city council? I sign it. And that's an, another official. It's kind of like the governor also signs off or can veto legislation at the Ohio level, and the same thing happens at the federal level. So locally, I sign it. I, I'm I'm in full support of that. I also the next morning send that off to the governor, lieutenant governor. We have two state reps that represent Logan County and two Ohio senators. And then there's our health commissioner locally. I, I send that resolution on to them. In essence, it's a letter encouraging things to move along and, and, and a statement that we're ready. Does it change Ohio's law and regulations that, that are holding some of these businesses still at bay? It does not, uh, but it's clearly stated that way. So resolutions are another way of writing letters. I wrote letters first to the uh, governor and that entire group back uh, around August 20th or 20, I'm sorry, April 20 or 21, saying, how about May 1st? Well, they did start rolling out things and that was a statewide letter writing campaign. So they heard from people that said, we're ready, May 1st. And so of course, we've been following along. Every day at two o'clock, governor comes on, and announces usually something new that they're rolling out. So it's been slow and people have been patient, but I think the citizens of our county, Logan County have done a really great job of keeping their social distance, washing their hands, everything your mother taught you, right? But now we're wearing face coverings and uh, we're just ready for the next step, which is let's open businesses slowly and safely and, and try to return local economy and, and, and jobs back back to its uh, original capacity. And that could still be some time, Angie. Yeah, I think that a lot of people thought that maybe this resolution was designed to just take over our area. But what you're saying is you basically wrote a strongly worded letter to the governor. 
Exactly. Well, I've written several, but I just get to sign mine from the mayor's office. When when you're on a uh, any any city government uh, legislative panel like a city council, that's how they do their. That's how they agree upon the language of the letter. It's in the form of a resolution, and so a council's resolution was voted upon. It passed. Uh, and, and so it actually becomes a part of our legislature, but it doesn't change any rules. We, we do not have the authority to, uh, to somehow uh, put ourselves in front of the governor's order and just say, this is what we're going to do. So we, we still have to follow the rules, but I mean, imagine if we didn't have laws and rules. And so uh, 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 for, for in as much as I've been trying to read up on the authority of the governor, I remind all of your listeners, man's a career politician, and before he was governor, he was our state's leading attorney general for eight years. The man knows Ohio's law, and uh, he and the Ohio Department of Health do have uh, the, the explicit uh, power uh, because of this pandemic event to, to jump in and, and insert some rules during this emergency period. So. Okay, and so uh, have you heard anything from the faith-based community and when churches are going to start opening? Yes, uh, one of my many Zoom meetings every week uh, uh, has included uh, the last time I think about 23 pastors were a part of that conversation, and I'm sure the, the word was passed to others. A couple things to keep in mind. I think churches, by and large, have been closed this period of time, but not because of Ohio's orders, and I, I think there's that fine line between church and state. However, all of the pastors that, that I, I've uh, been working with, just, just alongside to have some community support, understand that it's going to be different on the other side. And so they've been submitting plans to our local health director about uh, how will they social distance, how do people sit in the sanctuary, We've asked our fire chief to go into any and all churches that at least reach out to him, no fee involved, to remind them what their fire code capacity is for any given sanctuary. And then the, the governor's order asked that you would not exceed 50% of that. So the church that I worship at on Sundays, and I, by the way, all of them have probably been doing some kind of virtual service, so we've been enjoying church at home. I, I actually tuned in to more than one. But uh, our, our lower sanctuary has a capacity of about 400 people, and we have a balcony, and it's another 150. Well, let me tell you, we've never had 500 people at church on a Sunday, even Christmas or Easter. And so once you reduce that to 50%, it's, it's, it's reasonable. I think what you'll see most churches doing is they'll be opening at their own comfort level. Some of them started last Sunday, which is fine, but they did it with new, new safe guidelines. They could encourage face masks, hand washing, let's not shake hands. Communion is done a little differently. We don't pass the collection plate anymore, uh, but everybody has their own way to, to somewhat have it safer and yet have that same feel of gathering on a Sunday or a Wednesday or, or whatever they do uh, to enjoy uh, sharing the word of God and praying for all concerned. Uh, so I, I feel real good about our area pastors working together, sharing ideas, sharing best practices. Uh, and I think that between now and maybe the end of May, different churches will, will make their own announcements to not only the public, but of course their congregation about their plans to roll out. And Angie, one last thought is I think that what we'll see in this different world is that some people are going to be more comfortable staying at home. And I know that many of these churches said they'll probably uh, offer another service, so maybe not too many are together at once. You'll see some churches that will continue Facebook Live or uh, some, some type of streaming so that we can enjoy uh, a service virtually in the comfort of our home. Uh, and I, of course, there are folks with health conditions and there are some of our elderly uh, that really should, for the time being, stay stay at home, but but uh, be, feel a part of a of a service and and to be prayed over. 
All right. Well, it was good to talk to you. I'm glad that things are moving along. One last really quick question. When are the restaurants going to open for dining? Do we know that yet? We do. Uh, so let's see, this is Thursday. Uh, and I'll add another layer to that. So tomorrow, in addition to restaurants that have been doing this uh, kind of takeout, some curbside, but no dining in, tomorrow is the next layer. It only lasts for a week, and that encourages outdoor dining as well. As you know, not every restaurant has uh, tables and chairs or picnic tables outside their restaurant. So what Bell Fountain just did, and it will be official tomorrow, but the Picnic tables are in place. We repainted, so there's a fresh coat of paint on 17 picnic tables and they're now placed in downtown Bell Fountain. Additionally, we already owned three and three, four, there are six more coming from other businesses. And so it's, it's a nice rollout. There are over 25 picnic tables ready for that. So an additional layer, you could pick up from your favorite downtown Bell Fountain restaurant and just go to a picnic table and enjoy your meal under blue skies and some sunshine, which by the way, the coronavirus does not like sunshine and does not like blue skies and open air. The tables of course are separated at, at a good safe distance. Just one week from today, Thursday of next week, restaurants are permitted to be open for indoor dining. Now that's where they're starting to work with, uh, it, because some of these are pretty interesting small places uh, and some of them have maybe lots of tables and chairs. Well, in this course of the last few weeks or month, business owners, restaurant owners have been relaying out their, their, their plans. And so it, will, it should look different as we walk into and have a seat. And, and your, your table servers will probably uh, have face masks and, uh, and everything will be cleaned. Maybe some more things are throwaway instead of uh, dishwashered. And, and uh, it's just gonna be different. It's gonna be safer. And I, I feel real good about what's coming. But to your question, uh, outdoor dining starts tomorrow, Friday the 15th. And then next Thursday, just one week from today, we can start dining inside. That is provided the restaurant owner wants to open up and they feel ready. Ben Stoller from Maribel Fountain. Thanks so much for your time this morning. God bless you. Thanks for Zooming in with me. Have a great day. <laughs> you too. See ya. Okay. Bye-bye.